Hi guys, welcome to Caternix Corner. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about uh, feeders. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions lately online about the different style feeders that I use and what I do to uh, deal with feed loss or eliminate feed loss. Um, so I thought I'd real quick, you know, take you through and show you some of the different style feeders that I have. Probably one of the uh, feeders that the channel's uh, most well known for is the J-Style feeder. Um, we did a little modification on it where we put uh, um, one inch by two inch wire over the top of the feeder and that just kind of helps, you know, eliminate feed loss. And uh, I've had some people say that they've, they've had issues with it and they were still having feed loss even after installing that wire grate over top of the feeder. Um, but the, the trick is that I found is not to push the feed down in the feeder. I see a lot of people do that. They'll, they'll fill it up and then they'll take their hand and stuff the, the feed all the way down in the feeder to kind of fill up that trough. Well, that's where the birds are able to kick it out of the feeder. If you just, uh, you know, fill the feeder up on the outside and a little bit will trickle down in there and there'll be enough in there as they pick at it, it will slowly go down in there. And I'll bring you in and I'll show you these trays. There's, there's very little, if any, wasted feed on the feed drop or on the feeder itself or on the tray sorry about that um, another style feeder that I use are these uh, um, trough style feeders which I really like um, I've tried several different trough style feeders and uh, some of them were DIY projects you know I took like a uh, um, four inch PVC pipe split it down the middle capped off both ends and try to use that but that it was just one it was pretty expensive and two uh, there was a lot of feed waste so I stopped using that and I'm going to show you um, how you guys can uh, or where you can purchase this feeder at and how you can mount it to your cages here in a minute but uh, before I get to that I want to talk about some other feeders that I use when my chicks go into uh, the brooder after they uh, hatch out uh, usually after the second day or so, I'll use one of these. It's also a trough style feeder, but it's got the cover on it and it's got a, you know, a bunch of holes on each side and these seem to work really well. But, uh, I'll use these right up until the time that they go into the, the grow out cage. But I'll also, uh, when they're in the grow out cage, I will, uh, use this style feeder until I get them transitioned over to a J feeder. Another style feeder that I use, um, this is more for uh, cages where I might have just a few birds in it. Um, some of my uh, grow out pens don't have the J feeder cut in. Uh, I'll either use uh, the trough style feeder or I'll use one of these shoebox style feeders. And this is a real simple feeder that you can make. Uh, go to Walmart, you pick up these Sterilite boxes. They're um, about 99 cents a piece and using a one inch hole saw uh, or an inch and a quarter hole saw whatever size you want uh, cut you some holes around the outside edge and uh, fill it up but the main thing you want to make sure uh, on this one you can see that the holes are a little bit about halfway down they're a little too close to the bottom for my preferences I like them up higher and then if you fill up the feed just below that bottom of that hole the birds can't kick it out so I, I use these feeders in, uh, in some outside cages. I also use them uh, on some of my cages where I might be isolating a pair or something like that. Uh, another style feeder that I use, and this is mainly for out in the aviary. Uh, this is a uh, can style feeder, I guess you would call it. Uh, basically, it's got a bunch of holes around the bottom. You, you take the lid off, fill the feeder up and then put the, the uh, lid back in. And this just sits on the ground out in the uh, aviary and the birds uh, can feed out of it. Uh, originally when I got this, I didn't like it. I was getting an awful lot of feed waste and back to the same thing. Don't, when you fill it up, do not push the feed down trying to fill this trough up. You just want to pour the feed in, um, set it in front of your birds and what you know slides out is what they can access. And that does help a lot uh, in eliminating uh, feed loss. So um, those are the uh, the main styles of feeders that I use. Um, 
let me bring the camera in a little bit closer and I'll show you, uh, you know, basically how to uh, use this feeder, mount it to your cage and where you can get it and whatnot. Okay, so basically um, these feeders are a product that Hatching Time produces. Um, these are the feeders that they use on their uh, plastic Hatching Time cages. Um, but I found that they work very well and are easily adaptable to the style cages that I build. And basically all you need to do uh, when you purchase them, you'll get, you'll get the trough. Sorry about that. You'll get the trough itself. These are 36 inch long, long troughs, but they're available in 12 inch long, 24 inch long, or 36. Uh, the 12 inch is gonna cost you about $9 uh, per feeder. The 24 is gonna cost you around $15, and the 36 are closer to $20. Um, you'll get these, uh, these little green uh, plastic, uh, strips that just snap onto the back side of the feeder and there are arrows on there uh, showing you which way it mounts now i don't know if that's really important uh, when you're uh, using it for you know these cages which way it goes on i haven't really noticed the difference but basically all i do is uh, uh, i take the feeder and i drill a hole in each end uh, just using a quarter inch drill bit and you want to keep it as close to the, not as close to the edge You'll notice on on this green thing. It's got like a little notch uh, You want to keep it in that area of the notch <clears throat> Okay, and then the next thing to do is to mount your feeder um, The positioning of the feeder needs to be if you look at the front of this cage, it's, it's made out of one by two. Um, this is two inches up to the bottom of the door, the door area right there. So you wanna keep that trough even, the top of the trough even with the uh, top of the two inch wire. So it's gonna be two inches up from the floor of the cage. It'll be two inches up to the top of the, the feeder itself, the trough. And then just using uh, regular zip ties, just stick it through that, uh, that wire that's at two inches and through your hole and zip tie it in place. And just snug them down good and you're good to go. The nice thing about it is on a rollout cage, you can still lift the feeder up to collect your eggs, you know, if they're, if they're built up. Um, but it's still, it's very sturdy. I'll go ahead and fill this one up real quick. You know, it, it's very sturdy. It'll hold, you can fill it right at the top of food. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's not resting on the uh, egg rollout. The zip ties actually hold it up high enough uh, and tight enough up against the cage wire um, that it is basically self-supported. But they, they work really good. Um, you won't have any issues with loss. The, they can't kick the feed up past this uh, little green uh, plastic piece here. So it works out well. And I'll show you over on uh, the uh, cages that don't have the egg rollouts on the front. They're just my grow out cages. Um, you can just mount them right to the front of the cage in the same fashion that you do on this one. And uh, guys, to me, uh, this is probably the best investment that I've made uh, for my uh, DIY cages. Um, I love the idea that I can have the feeder outside of the cage. I don't need to open up every single door to get in and feed the birds. I can just feed them from outside. They have no problems, um, you know, figuring out how to stick their head through the wire and uh, access the feeder. Okay, so you can see this is one of my uh, grow out cages. Um, does not have the egg rollout on it and the feeder mounts to it just like it would on the uh, the rollout cages uh, and it's it's pretty stout just uh, one zip tie on each end and uh, it holds the feeder good and tight I imagine if you wanted you could uh, you know put a zip tie in the middle but there's no really need to do that. Um, 
and you might think, well, how do I get the, the feeder off, you know, to clean the feeder out? Basically what I do, um, if I get like a, a bunch of dust buildup in the feeder itself, I'll just take uh, my shop vac and vacuum it out and then take a damp cloth and wipe it out. If I do need to take it off, it's just a matter of, you know, cutting a couple zip ties and the, uh, the feeder comes right off and uh, just as easily can be mounted. Okay, and Hatching Time also has these uh, plastic grates available, which are meant to lay on top of the feed, uh, inside the feeder, and that's supposed to help out with feed waste. But to be honest with you guys, um, I haven't found them necessary to use. Uh, I don't have any feed loss, you know, as is. So I'm really happy with these uh, Hatching Time trough feeders, um, and I wish I would had thought of using these prior to installing all my J feeders. Um, because they work extremely well. The J feeders work great um, as long as you do that modification to them, but it would have been nice to have, you know, uniform uh, feeders throughout all my cages. Um, so guys, that's pretty much it as far as the different types of feeders that I use and how I deal with uh, feed waste or the lack thereof. Um, I hope you guys found this video interesting. I hope it helps some of you out there. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. Helps me out. You can get notified of any new and upcoming videos. Thanks for joining me today, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.